Father God, we worship you. We worship you, Lord God. We come before you now in expectation. Father God, open our ears. Holy Spirit, open our ears. Open our hearts to receive a fresh from you this morning. Lord, we want to be freshly infilled with all that you've got for us this morning. Lord, take away any dross, anything that has happened over the week, any, anything, Father God, that is laying heavy on our hearts. Father God, we just lay them at your feet right now. Father God, we need that fresh manner from you. We need to just be so open to receiving a fresh from you. Father God, your word is life to us and we so need it right now. Thank you, Father God, for all that you've got for us. Thank you in your mighty name. Amen. Job 11, verse 7 says, Can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than the heavens above. What can you do? They are deeper than the depths below. What can you know? The measure is longer than the earth and wider than the sea. Who can fathom the mysteries of God? And our Bible is a mystery. It is a hidden mystery that we can only really know when God begins to reveal it to us and unpick the mystery that is contained in scripture. It's hidden, but it's not hidden beyond finding it because Jesus says, those who seek will find. And the onus has always got to be on us to want to seek out more of God, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And God is looking for people that are looking for him that something stirs in the heart of a man that says there's got to be more to life than this. And then they begin the journey of seeking the maker, the creator God, who is there waiting to be found. But he wants us to um, begin that journey to look for him. And the more we go on with God, the more we realise that contained within his word. As, as Cheryl was saying yesterday, the word of God, it's not just reading it, it's knowing it in your knower. And the more you eat the word of God, the more you take on the word of God, the more you see the depths and the riches of this mystery that God has got for us. In 1 Corinthians 2, it says, no, we declare God's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God prepared for those who love him. These are the things God revealed to us by his spirit. So how do we know God? We only know him by what he reveals to us by his spirit. That's why, you know, if you try and talk to um, a non-believer about spiritual things, do you feel that? Like absolute brick wall in front of you, what is clear to you, what is obvious to you, is not obvious to them. It's like they can't see what you're saying. And to us, you know, can't you see God in creation? We looked at that over the last few weeks. Can't you see God in everything around us? But you see, these things are only discerned spiritually. And if they're human spirit is closed to the things of God, then it, you will get that complete blank look. 
And it's only as God begins to work in their heart that a little chink of light comes in, a little bit of hunger, a little bit of perhaps dissatisfaction for what is happening in their lives, that they begin to think, well, maybe, just maybe, there is a God out there. Maybe there is something in the spirit realm that I am not understanding. Maybe there is one that's bigger than me, bigger than the circumstances that I'm in. And the minute that happens, that little bit of chink opens, God comes in. And that is exactly my story. Um, I think I always believed there was God, but I did not know him. And then a day came when I began to, I couldn't stop thinking about him. And it wouldn't go away because somehow I had opened that little bit, that little window into my heart and the Holy Spirit was coming and beginning to reveal himself to me. So much so that I felt really quite weird, dissatisfied, hungry for what I didn't know, but knew there was something to do with this God that I wanted to know more about. And it probably is the same for each and every one of us. It, your story will be different because God always uses who you are. He will speak to you in a very different way than he speaks to me. But God begins by just making you feel, I call it holy dissatisfaction. And sometimes when we see that holy dissatisfaction in people, we start thinking, Ooh, you know, uh, and sometimes they can be quite aggressive in that holy dissatisfaction, but sometimes that's actually God working and confronting them, waiting for that chink to open up a bit more, waiting for that hunger to get a bit more, because it, it, he, God is a mystery to us because he's so much bigger, because his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. He is a mystery. And we will be discovering that entire mystery forever, all throughout eternity. And we'll never get to the stage where we think, oh yeah, we know him. Because then there'll be another facet, another angle of him, and it will go on and on and on because he is an endless God. And he's got so much to show us, so much to reveal to us. You know, people think and laugh and joke about heaven and, um, you know, floating around on a cloud and we'd be bored out of our brains because there won't be all the battles that we have here on the face of the earth. But there will be so much to explore, such incredible beauty that we haven't even begun to understand or see. I don't think we will be bored for a moment. I think it is going to be hugely exciting. But within the whole of scripture, that's why here at Call to Prayer, we absolutely love the entire Bible because it's only as you put these pieces together that you begin to see the full picture, that you begin to see that woven in the whole of the Bible, you know, too many Christians just gravitate to the New Testament. And the New Testament is wonderful. It, it obviously gives us um, such deep and wonderful revelation of, of Jesus and his life and everything that, of course, it is. It's huge and important. But there, all the way through the Old Testament as well, is the mystery that's hidden and it's revealed in the new. And that is what is so exciting because once we have the Holy Spirit to reveal the scriptures to us, when we go back to the old, we begin to see, oh my goodness, Jesus was there on every single page and it's all about him. And that's why when Jesus said to the uh, guys on the road to Emmaus, he, he began to reveal and open the scriptures to them because they were all about him, all pointing to our Saviour. 
And I love mysteries. I don't know about you, but I love mysteries. And it's probably um, a bit of a, um, a, a secret passion of mine. You know, give me, give me some of these detective programs, good old Poirot and, and various others, you know, that uh, sometimes are a little bit dodgy, but you know, it's the mystery, the who done it. Uh, please, I'm not into those, you do understand that, but it's just the mystery. It's finding and discovering who, did, who done it, who did this crime that uh, I, I find really interesting. And because of that passion for mystery, is my passion for scripture. I love digging and digging and digging and digging in scripture until you reach the treasure that is within the scriptures, that which God has hidden, but the Holy Spirit longs to reveal. I remember um, it was actually Pete Gregg who said, uh, some of you will know Pete Gregg, he's uh, done a lot with the 24 7 prayer and so on he came to be with us here and he said this he said look for those that are hungry and god looks for those that are hungry if you are hungry and thirsting for truth i don't care where you're born i don't care what religion you may have been born into if there's a hunger and a thirst for the truth, you will find it. You will find the treasure. And I love the way that Jesus is just turning up in people's bedrooms all over the world and revealing himself because within them, there's a desire to know who he is. I love that. And may he do it more and more and more. I believe that God loves to respond to those that are hungry. I always encourage people here, you know, there's certain scriptures that get to you. My current scripture is when Jesus said, those born of the spirit are like the wind. You don't know where they're going or where they're coming from. And that's my excuse and I love it because, you know, half the time we have no idea where we're going and where we're coming from and, and so on. And I think that that whole scripture has got hidden depths that I've yet to discover. What did Jesus really, really mean when he said those words? And I, I do this at times, there's a scripture that just gets to me and I'll, sometimes it'll be years later that all of a sudden he will give me another revelation in it. And you think, oh wow, why didn't I see this before? Because the secret things belong to the Lord, as Cheryl said yesterday. That scripture from Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord, but those things revealed belong to us. And he reveals them by his spirit. So, you know, this because the word of God is not something that was written on earth, the word of God was divinely inspired and came down from heaven. And therefore, it's not like your average novel. It's not like your Agatha Christie book. It is not. That because it came from a spiritual realm, these things can only possibly be spiritually discerned. And unless the spirit is opening up to the things of God, there will be that wall. Ephesians 3 is, is such a brilliant scripture. It is such a brilliant chapter. Beloved friends, I'm reading from the Passion Version, but um, you, you know, we here at Call to Prayer, we do love the Passion Version. I do know that not everybody likes it, but if you read it as poetry, you know, it doesn't substitute for your, or your regular Bible, but it's like, poetry it is inspired and so I, I do invite you to keep a very open mind you know let's allow the holy spirit to show us that things people have revelation and understanding that in turn can give us a fresh revelation and understanding so it never does away 
with your traditional translations, but it can uh, add, um, add a fresh understanding, I would say. So, beloved friends, because of my love for Jesus Christ, I am now he's a prisoner for the sake of all you who are not Jews, so that you will hear the gospel that God has entrusted to me to share with you. For this wonderful mystery, which I briefly described, was given to me by divine revelation. And you see, this is Paul writing. This was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He knew God's word, but he didn't have the spirit to bring the life out of God's word. And so when God got hold of him and took the very scriptures that he loved and breathed the Holy Spirit on those scriptures and gave him that divine revelation, it all became so clear to Paul that he began to write these incredible epistles that we have. And he knew the difference and he gave his life to serve the one who brought that difference of not just having the word of God, which was fantastic in itself, but it didn't bring the life that God intended it to bring. And when he got the divine revelation of what it really meant, there was no stopping him. So that whenever you read it, you will be able to understand my revelation and insight into the secret mystery of the Messiah. And that is the thread that goes through the whole of scripture that Jesus is contained within the whole of scripture. It is a thread that goes through, it's the secret mystery of the Messiah. And that is what gives us confidence to stand on our faith today because Jesus did not come in to avoid. He came into an ongoing prophetic work of God. And it's the, the way he fulfilled the promises that went before him that we can stand today totally and completely on our faith because it was impossible for one man to fulfill all those things. So God prepared the way. Jesus did not just turn up at Bethlehem, unannounced, um, out the blue. He did not. He was the one, obviously we looked at this, that through whom and for whom all things were made, but within the stories of his people, within the prophets, within the law, it all was um, a precursor, if you like, to him. It was pointing the way to him. There has never been a generation that has been given the detailed understanding of this glorious and divine mystery until now. You see, they had glimpses before, but now the Holy Spirit was able to reveal it. God is revealing it only now to his sacred apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. Here's the secret. The gospel of grace has made you, non-Jewish believers, into co-heirs of his promise through your union with him. And you now have become members of his body, one with the anointed one. You see, there's only one faith. There's only one true God, and that is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the revelation of the true God was given to the Hebrew people, to the Jewish people, and they understood that their God was the God, the divine God. And at the time, Gentiles could come in to the faith. We saw that through Ruth, through the stories of Rahab, and, um, and others, we know that they came into the Jewish faith, but it was limited. And Jesus came to open the way for all to join this one faith, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And of course, we know as believers in Christ that God is three persons, 
And that is always a divine mystery that's hidden, but is certainly there all the way through the Old Testament. And that is what is so exciting. And now you see we can become one with the Anointed One. So as it comes into the fullness of the Gospel, the good news that Jesus came to give, the good news wasn't just there is this wonderful God, this only Creator God. That was a huge message. But God is now saying, and now because of what Jesus has done, you can become one with him. And something else opens up that is incredible for us. I have been made a messenger of this wonderful news. This is wonderful, glorious news. The good news of the gospel. The gospel means good news. And sometimes when you look at Christians, you think, well, where is the good news? Now, you know, we've got the joke of we look sometimes more like we've been sucking lemons than full of good news. But we want to be people that actually are bursting with this good news, this glorious glorious gospel that it's now christ in you the hope of glory you are one with our maker you are one with the lord god god in you and that's what jesus was expressing in john 17 that i'm in the father the father's in me and guess what guys you can be in me too and the father's going to be in you and we're all going to be this glorious one together isn't that Huge, isn't that glorious news? It is amazing. It is amazing. I've been made a messenger of this wonderful news by the gift of grace that works through me. Even though I am the least significant of his holy believers, and may we always feel that we have not got it, that we are, you know, May we never think we're better than anybody else, basically. We've got far too much of that. We have a little joke um, sometimes. It, there is no other head of the church of Jesus Christ but Jesus himself. All the rest of us are his body. He is the head. We are his body on the face of the earth. Even though uh, I'm the least significant, um, of all holy, holy believers, this grace gift was imparted when the manifestation of his power came upon me. You know, when we ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, that power of God comes in to us. Grace alone empowers me so that I can boldly preach this wonderful message to non-Jewish people, sharing with them the unfading, inexhaustible riches of Christ, which are beyond comprehension. You see, in the normal mind, this understanding of God defies logic. When you think of Jesus' life, that he came to this back of beyond place, in Israel, that in most of his ministry was around the Sea of Galilee, talking to sometimes just a handful of people. You know, we think if he come today and we've got such communications with the internet and so on, you know, how many millions he could have reached, but he chose, he came at the fullness of time, the right time he came and he felt that that was all that was needed. And I mean, it's crazy. He walked with them, not for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, three years. He didn't begin his ministry till he was 30, the age of a, a Jewish rabbi. And then for three years, walked with them. This handful of guys that most of who deserted him at the cross and one certainly betrayed him and one denied him, you know, you wouldn't pick them. Thank goodness, because God picked me and he picked you. And, you know, we're so glad that we don't have to do anything to earn that. We just have to let that chink open in our heart. 
hearts. But Jesus took the chance with these guys and trusted them, went to the cross, which in itself was a peculiar thing to do. Even the disciples couldn't get their head around why he had to die. And yet, even though there was only one of them and a handful of women at the foot of the cross, his mission was finished. It is finished. And he trusted them to go and impact the world. And that's exactly what they did. And those in Jerusalem said, the whole world has been turned upside down. And you think of the way Christianity has gone throughout the world. And you think of the nations today that try and prevent it and stamp it out. Nothing can stop it. It goes underground and it grows and it grows and it grows because the kingdom of God can never stop advancing. So this is beyond our comprehension. It doesn't make understanding up in the natural but when you look at it with the eyes of the spirit it makes perfect sense the cross makes perfect sense he had to be our passover man he had to die for our sins it all makes perfect sense but to the natural mind to the unspiritual person it is a nonsense so we have to pray that the Holy Spirit will break into somebody's life and begin to open that chink. My passion is to enlighten every person to this divine mystery. It was hidden for ages past until now and kept a secret in the heart of God, the creator of all. The purpose of this was to unveil before every throne and rank of angelic orders in the heavenly realm, God's full and diverse, diverse wisdom revealed through the church. This perfectly wise plan was destined from eternal ages, and that's what I was looking at the first few weeks, that God planned it all, finished it before it even began, and fulfilled completely in our Lord Jesus Christ, so that now we have boldness through him and free access as kings before the Father because of his complete confidence in Christ's faithfulness. And in uh, the NIV, I just want to read verse 10 of that chapter. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. So, not just on the face of the earth, but to those in the heavenly realms, we are to make known the manifold wisdom of God. And that is by and only by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And it is through the Spirit of God that we then can know Him. And you know, that is, is the core of our faith. That is exactly what Jesus came to do. Everything pointed to him. He began revealing himself, who God is through the Old Testament, through Moses, through Abraham, through David, through the prophets, and then through his only begotten son, who chose to come and live amongst us. Because by doing that, it wasn't just going to be knowing about God. It was that you would know him internally as well and that is why this is such great news because we cannot do it uh, in ourselves we can only do it as God leads us to do it so join with me in this mystery as we go through the next few weeks we just want to begin to unravel more and more about the kingdom of God the mystery that is contained in the scripture. And, and you know, it, it, it's level by level by level. And the more we dig, 
the law will be revealed. And God loves to give us a Holy Spirit spade and say, right, get digging so that you will know me more. I love it in the book of Philippians where Paul writes, I want to know him, Lord. I want to know Christ Jesus. And you think, my goodness me, this was at the end of Paul's life. This was Paul who had that incredible encounter on the road to Damascus. This was Paul that had all those years in the Arabian desert where he wasn't taught by any apostle, but by Jesus himself, he reveals in the book of Galatians. Can you imagine what was going on in that Arabian desert? I want to see a video play back of that because I think that must be a well worth one watching. What was Jesus talking to Paul about? What was he showing him? How exciting that must have been one amazing class to be in. I would love to have been Paul in that desert with Jesus just revealing and showing and one-to-one -one tuition going on there. How amazing, brilliant. And yet all that and Paul's life, Paul's life of setting up churches and traveling and sharing the gospel and being beaten and whipped and uh, tortured and going through all those things, shipwrecked, and oh goodness me, what a, what a story he has. And yet at the very end of his life, he says, I want to know him. Because I think Paul understood that this mystery of our God is so eternal, it's depths beyond anything, anyone can ever fathom. And because it is so rich that every time you dig a little deeper, you just want to dig a little bit deeper more. And just in the time that I've become been a Christian, which is now 30 years, I think, if not more, I found the more I know him, the more I don't know him. And the more there is to know about him. And I think that is the most wonderful part of this incredible journey that we have, that we can keep on and on and on, and we never get tired of knowing more, because there's always a lot more he wants to share with us. Amen. So Father, I pray for us all, Lord, for a fresh infilling now of Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit, we recognize that it is because you open up the divine to us. You give us this divine revelation. And Lord, I pray that you come and inspire us to get out that spade to dig deeper into your word, knowing that when we do, Lord, we do not read it as we would another mystery story, a detective novel, but we actually are touching the very oracles of God that are fathomless. And Lord, I pray for a fresh anointing right now from you, a fresh desire to go deeper into your word, Lord. Help us to Hold those scriptures that speak to us and to meditate on them and let them permeate through us so that we can actually live them because your word is life. And Lord, there is such incredible life through the word of God. It is the word of life. And Father, I, I do believe that all of us have a little thimble full of all that you really have for us. So Lord, if we have lost our hunger, Holy Spirit of God, will you come now and make us hungry for more of you? Let our prayer and our desire be, as the great apostle Paul was, that we want to know you, Jesus, more. 
Help us to enjoy this journey with you. Help us to be excited by the gems that we find on the way. Help us to know that the treasure is never ever ending. And just when we have discovered one treasure, Lord, help us realize there is so much more still to discover. And so Father, I thank you that you do not give up on us, but you came to enable us and help us along our way, that we don't walk this journey on our own. And Holy Spirit, you are there, the spirit of truth, to reveal all truth to us. And we know that your word is truth. And so Jesus, I ask you to come in your great high priestly pray. Your word is truth, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Come and sanctify us by your word as we take hold of the truth, not just in our head, but in the depth of our innermost being. That Lord, it just oozes out of us because it's gone to that deepest part of us. And Father, we ask this in your very precious name of your beloved Son, our Messiah, who came to make God known to all who genuinely seek after him. And for that, Lord, we forever give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.